Capital Budgeting 7, Functions, MIRR, EAC, also called EAR, and Profitability Index. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, our email, and our phone number. What I'd like to do is expand on some calculations that we've already done on some prior videos. This is a co pretty comprehensive question I did for a student. And the assignment that the student was given was called free cash flow. And let's talk about how this problem is set up. We have cash flows running down the side here, years 1 through 15. And we're going to see cash flows of different lengths of time because... If you look at the tabs at the bottom, we have different scenarios. The scenario we have here happens to be seven years. We'll see on other tabs scenarios that run both longer and shorter. And so we have different interest rate assumptions across the top in brown. So the first thing is, let's look at cash flow, which is simply dollars in and out. So the ones with brackets are dollars out, checks we're writing, the inflows our numbers without the bracket. So the first thing we do is we go down to the sum of the cash benefits down here at the bottom. And then what we're doing over here in this column is we're getting the present value of the cash flows using a discount rate of 10 percent. And you see a formula here in the box and I'm going to click on the first formula. The numerator is B7, which is the $2,000 in blue, divided by 1 plus the interest rate C2. So in this case, it's 1.1. And then there's an exponent, and the exponent is the year that we're in, in this case, year 0. So since we're in year 0, the, cash, the discounted cash flow is the same as the check that we wrote. We're in year 0. Let's go down to a different year. Here's year 3. Again, numerator in blue B10, that's the $60 cash flow, divided by 1 plus the interest rate, which is 1.1. And the exponent in this case, A10, is 3 years. So that's the actual formula we can use if you want to use a formula. And I copied and pasted it down to get those cash flows. And if we go down to the bottom of the page... we can get net present value at 10%. So let's click on that slide and see what that says. What that represents is the summation of C7 to C14. So let's click on that and let's slide up. And we see that C7 through C14 are highlighted. So each one of those cells, we have the formula for getting the discounted cash value, and we add them up, and we get the net present value. So we have the net present value at 10%, 11%, 12%, 14%, and you can see that the higher the rate that we discount, the less the total cash flows are until 14%, which is actually negative. So those are the cash flows. Internal rate of return is the rate of discounting at which the cash flows equal zero and we get a little bit of a clue here because the internal rate of return here's the formula IRR colon B7 to B14 so in blue we have all the cash flows highlighted comma C2 the interest rate point one and again internal rate of return is the cash flows the rate of discounting to get the cash flows to zero and we find out it's 11.96 percent and that makes logical sense because we know it's between 11 percent which is a positive 123 and 12 percent which is almost break even it's only four dollars and forty cents from break even so we know it's something close to 12 percent so i hope that makes logical sense mirr is another function key and we see a definition here of MIRR returns the internal rate of return where positive and negative cash flows are financed at different rates. 
And there's a function for that in Excel. So let me click on that function. And if I scroll up again to the top, we do the summation of all the cash flows for the year in blue. And then it's comma C2, which is the interest rate, and then comma C2 again. So we actually use both. We use the interest rate twice. And that's MIRR right here. Profitability index is more complex. Let's go to the bottom of the page and get a definition. I have a nice website reference here, thinkanddone.com, that did a nice job on profitability index. What does profitability index mean? This is from Investopedia, and it says an index that attempts to identify the relationship between costs and benefits of a proposed project through the use of a ratio calculated as numerator, the present value of the future cash flows, divided by the initial investment. Now that's fairly simple, but we can see once we click on the cell that it's fairly that the calculation can get a little complicated. Because what we're seeing when we click on the definite when we click on the calculation is the numerator <coughs> is the sum of these flows, the denominator is the sum of these negative flows. So we have negative cash flows in the denominator and we have positive cash flows in the numerator. You'll see that these numbers in blue are the same as the positive cash flows over here. So essentially the formula is the sum in the numerator top, positive cash flows, same as these positive cash flows in column C, divided by the sum of the negative cash flows and we get if I hit return, we see we have a ratio of 1 to 1.11, which means the, cat, the positive cash flows are slightly greater than the negative cash flows. Finally, we have EAA, where we have a short definition here at the bottom. EAA or EAC annualizes the total cost of the project over its life. The same type of calculation can be used to annualize any amount whether it's such as the product project's NPV, net present value. In such cases, the amount is called equivalent annual benefit, EAA. And they give you a formula there to figure that out. Let's click on the cell here and see what we end up with. We see there's a formula. And the formula says payment, PMT, the first number, C2. Let's go up and grab C2. There's the 10%, the discounting rate. A14 in green is the last year of the cash flow. And then we subtract B, whoops, we subtract B34. Which is this amount right here. And so that's how we end up with an EAA calculation. Let me undo that so we can still have that value there. I'll click up here again. So again, payment, C2 the discount rate, A14 in green was the last year of the cash flow, and then we subtract that net present value amount that we end up with when we add up all the cash flows. That is the beginning of our discussion on this uh, fairly complicated cash flow sheet. We have some other templates that will appear on more videos that are not on the web, a web page that lists videos by topic from the website, where you can access either the spreadsheet templates or the videos themselves. The YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, you can email me for a complete listing of our YouTube videos. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and chat sessions, stltest.net is the website. Here's our email and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.